So this is the final video um, in talking about, you know, masculine, feminine wounds. Um, well, we, we didn't really talk about feminine wounds, but we talked about how the masculine wound can manifest in both men and women. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what to do, how do we heal, and how do we break out of this cycle, and oh my gosh, okay, so my little battery sign just popped up on my camera, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, so talking about healing, when you find yourself, or at first after you've even identified what is kind of, um, I don't want to say triggering you, but what is making you fall into these old cycles, whether it is um, you playing some type of game, maybe getting a little competitive with the male that you're talking to, or maybe not even competitive, you just kind of seeing yourself as above him and getting defensive. I find that I will kind of become defensive, almost like he is the bad guy, and sometimes that would mean be like me thinking he only wants me for sex and that's even if he's been very understanding and open and you know puts in the effort to get to know me emotionally I still have this thought process of it being me against him when really it should be us together <laughs> um, if that makes any sense so identifying um, you know what brings you into this thought process this cycle and you know what are you doing after these thoughts are popping up or these insecurities how is this actually playing out um, so for the we talk a lot about the sacral chakra this is huge for women like this is so important for women and when you're healing these masculine wounds healing this sacral chakra is really what is going to bring new opportunities, new relationships to your life or just kind of breathe like a breath of fresh air into your already existing relationship, especially if you've noticed if you're already doing these things with the person you're currently with and you want to maybe reverse the way things are going. Because um, if these kind of toxic games are left to just continue then for the most part things just like fall apart like they don't really stay together for a very long time but why would you why would you want to stay in that toxic cycle where you both are just kind of at odds with each other and not really together as a team not it's we not me versus you and this person's going to hurt me you know why would you really want that so with the sacral chakra um, there are some stones that can help you boost this chakra that you can work with every day if you're into crystals you don't have to be buying these crystals that are hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars so what actually is the sacral chakra well the sacral chakra is the second chakra the first one being your root chakra and then the second is your sacral it's right in between your belly button and I guess you would say your pelvis that pelvic bone so right in like the womb area so where the baby actually starts to grow um, you know the ovaries are over on each side and you know this is for women it is such a powerful area sacral chakra is related to earthly pleasures and how we interact with the world around us as well as our emotional state so i've seen people kind of describe it as a barometer for our feelings when the sacral chakra is off you can find people whose feelings are literally a roller coaster high highs and very low lows emotionally they might be a little unstable with relationships they can kind of go from hot to cold very quickly um and it's funny because this will in turn affect your root chakra and um i guess creating a lack mindset and a feeling of um not being secure having no security so for the sacral chakra it is related to the color orange and the element is water. This is very important that you remember that the element is water because when we're healing it, um, soaking in baths, any type of bath, this could be Epsom salt bath, this could be um, you know, a bath with, I love getting the rose petals, like I'll buy roses just to throw them into a bath <laughs> after I pick every single petal off. Um, and I'll add essential oils, sometimes rose absolute, um, or you can do bath bombs, but water is very important for your sacral chakra it can help in healing it um, drinking lots of water and staying hydrated 
helps with our sacral chakra. It's so funny because when we're, when we're menstruating, which is a very powerful time for a woman, um, this menstruation process, I've seen a lot of people talk about how it can amp up their manifestations, um, especially if you are going through menstruation around the time of like a full moon or maybe even a new moon, it can help you really get your thoughts and your ideas on liftoff. Like it gives you this boost. Um, so for women, if we're not drinking enough water with all of the, um, you know, our uterine lining shedding and the bleeding that occurs, if we're not getting enough water to replenish all of that that we're losing, it can cause us to have very, very painful menstrual cycles. Like we will have lots of clotting. We might have huge cramps that like keep us in bed. Um, you know, it can be definitely a very unpleasant time for many people. And usually this is a physical sign that your sacral chakra is out of balance. And so drinking lots of water for a woman, not only when she's on her menstrual cycle, but also just all throughout the day for beauty and for health and for vibrancy of your skin, your hair, everything. This is very, very, very important. Um, so the main functions of your sacral chakra are going to be passion as well as pleasure, your emotion, your creativity, and your enjoyment. All of these things. I think passion and pleasure are very important. If you see that you're having issues with orgasm, this can also be an indication that your sacral chakra is a little off balance. It's not really working. Um, you do not need another person to be enjoying, um, you know, things like masturbation. You can do it on your own. You don't need a partner for that. Um, but also it can, it kind of does show that sometimes in relationships, when we are strengthening this sacral chakra area, um, you will notice when you are in tune and you guys are in alignment, getting there to that orgasm will be so much easier. And there are a lot of people who love their partner, um, but are not able to achieve that height of ecstasy with their partner. And so there are definitely um, a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about today will help you in healing that sacral chakra and helping you reach those new heights, um, whether it be with yourself or with your partner or just getting things ready for your future partner. Um, I, I do find masturbation to be very helpful in manifesting a partner because everything, when we're manifesting, we should really act as if, okay, so act or just to be it, like we're already there. So that means if you have to start thinking, okay, what is it going to be like once I'm in this relationship? Um, you know, in the beginning stages, are you guys gonna be the type that say, you know, good night every night? Are you guys gonna be the type to say good morning, I love you, you know, every single morning? You know, so for some people sending, and this is gonna sound so stupid, but this is like a manifestation hack, but start sending those text messages to yourself. So in your phone, type in your phone number, you know, it'll pull up a new little text bubble and start texting to yourself. So sometimes this could be good morning, I love you, or um, the things that you would like to either hear from your future partner or the things that you would like to tell your future partner. So when I have done this, which is, this is a very powerful tool in helping you to act as if, because some people are like, I'm trying to manifest something. How do I act as if it's already happened? Clearly, I'm not in a relationship. I'm as single as they come and it's just like you have to start pretending really that's all this means you're pretending but you will notice that you will pretend so well it'll start to raise your vibration you will literally this is so stupid but you will literally start to smile down like when when you see these texts that you're literally sending to yourself but another very powerful thing if you don't want to do the text message but the text message method but i i highly highly recommend you at least try it um, and you can tell them how much they mean to you or that you're thinking about them um, or like I said you can play both roles and I, I recommend to play both roles so things that you would like to tell your partner in the future um, and also things you would like to hear from your partner in the future and this is going to help you get to that vibrational state of where it already has happened you are already living it and you get used to this um, you know, feeling this love. Like some people say, well, just love yourself, just work on yourself. But it's like, what does that really mean? And so we can actually take it a step further into manifesting this into our reality. So with these text messages, we are taking our thought process that is in our head and we are bringing it into this current reality now. This is very, very powerful. I didn't mean to get off on a tangent about this, but um, it is one of those lesser known, I think, secrets that once more people start trying it, most people start talking about it and sharing it, it's gonna like catch on like wildfire. 
Um, another one would be start thinking about the things that you guys are going to be doing. Um, and so I thought this was so cool if you guys follow Leo or Alexandria. She actually said something about um, when she was trying to manifest a relationship, she would start to do the things that she wanted to do with her partner and so for her that meant going to the farmer's market like on saturdays <laughs> and so even if she had to go by herself or with friends she would start to do that or even going out to movies um you know you can go to a movie theater by yourself i've definitely done this just because there's movies i want to see and sometimes my friends might not feel comfortable going to the movie theaters right now or maybe i just don't want to wait um so definitely get comfortable doing these things and you'll notice that you will get so into that movie it does not feel like i'm in that movie theater alone like it really doesn't the only awkwardness is really getting up and leaving because you're just like oh I'm leaving alone but like that's the only time like when you're in it it's just I don't know you're just enjoying it and you have your popcorn and you have your snacks or sometimes I like sneak in snacks like ice cream sundaes or whatnot and um, yeah you're just I don't know it's it's so easy when you start going through these motions even if you're doing it by yourself it's so easy to get that pleasure and to just feel that emotion of just this is fun um, once you start doing it and so yeah so for her she started doing those things whether she had to do them alone or if she brought a friend or a family member you know you have people in your life already who love you so much start doing these things with them um, they don't have to be things that cost money um, a great thing would be going on picnics. I like to go on picnics with my family and sometimes we'll go on a picnic to the beach and we'll bring umbrellas and we'll bring, uh, we'll pack snacks, um, chips and sandwiches and maybe even we'll splurge, have soda. Like you can all start these things right now, but you have to bring it into the physical world. So manifestation isn't just about me taking my journal and scripting or writing how I want my life to be, acting as if I'm already living it. It's not about me just speaking things out loud, though this is a very important part. It's about doing those things and also doing something in reality. This reality that I'm in now, that's what makes it real. So the passion, the pleasure, you have to start feeling those things now. And so getting back to what I was talking about with masturbation, um, self-pleasure is a very good way to start not only healing your sacral chakra and helping you to um, get to that feeling of ecstasy and pleasure, but it can really help you um, when you also have uh, a partner. <laughs> and so uh, main functions of sacral chakra, emotion, creativity, enjoyment, passion, pleasure. For creativity, this could be drawing, this could be painting. Um, for me, I'm not really a drawer or a painter um, and I can't play a musical instrument yet, though I would love to learn. But for me, this is more dancing, dancing and singing. Am I the best singer? No, but I do it a lot and it's really fun, especially when I'm by myself. So this could be listening to music, but be careful. There's definitely some music that brings down our vibration. Um, I can't give you guys a list of songs that will bring down your vibration. You have to get in tune with yourself and notice how you feel after certain songs are playing. So uh, once you've acknowledged what songs make you feel happy and energetic and excited or sexy and beautiful, play those more often. And then once you realize which ones kind of bring you down a little bit or like bring up a, like a bad memory, obviously we're, we're going to avoid those. But it's okay if you are feeling kind of down because you can just switch gears. So if you kind of do feel sad because it reminded you of like your ex-boyfriend or something, it's okay to feel that sadness for a little bit. But you know, turn the music off or like go to another song like you know you just have to acknowledge the emotion and move on um some people i think the emotion gets there and then they start to feel guilty about how bad they're feeling or the fact that they're still affected by this memory when it's been so long and so like they'll kind mm -hmm. of like stay there in that lower vibration so areas of the body that you will notice when your sacral chakra is fully functioning these areas will also be fully functioning and when they are not you might have some issues with these areas so number one is your lymphatic system number two is your circulatory system this goes back to the water drinking the water is greatly going to help you with your circulatory system it's really going to help you with everything but getting things circulating getting the vitamins and the supplements that you're taking daily into every cell of your body making sure that you're very hydrated it's basically killing so many birds with one stone it's not even funny. Um, it also rules your reproductive organs, and we talked about your little ovaries and all that good stuff. Your pelvic area, just because it's in that area, um, it's right in between, you know, the your root chakra is more like at the base of your spine. Um, so like by the opening of like your vaginal canal maybe, or maybe you're, it's more if you're like anus. Um, but for the sacral chakra, it's in between the belly button 
and pelvis so it is a part of that pelvic area also your kidneys see we're drinking the water your bladder drinking the water and your large intestines when these things are not working out when you are feeling bloated when you're having lots and lots of cramping like you're gonna have some cramping but when you notice that you're not able to release your excrement um, in a timely fashion and maybe it's building up to where you're having stomach aches or you're having bloating um, this is kind of a heads up that the sacral chakra is a little out of balance and so there will be times when you have to be mindful of this even if it seems like nothing's wrong to just make it um, kind of like just maintenance routine maintenance even if you don't feel like you need it just to make sure that you do some of these things just to keep things going well some people they only want to acknowledge that something's wrong once it physically manifests but by maintaining these things and keeping them in perfect working order we can make sure that we do not allow them the chance to get off balance so with the sacral chakra being your energy center that basically governs your feelings and your inner emotions and your outer sensations this is so important um, i think for going back to orgasms for orgasms for a lot of people, it starts in our head. All of that's happening in our brain. So when your inner emotions are off, when you are laying down in bed with someone that you cannot trust, that you think is betraying you, how are you ever going to reach, you know, the highest orgasm you possibly could, like, or even reach one at all? Like, how can you? When your inner emotional state is off, balance um, it's, it's really difficult for you to feel those outer sensations so our sexuality our sensuality our pleasure it's all tied into this chakra um, and it's not just pleasure of physical pleasure a lot of the pleasure is just the pleasure you get from doing those creative things like dancing or like singing or painting or playing a musical instrument or watching a movie things like that it's, um, around I would just say anything that falls under the umbrella term creativity so the arts. So intimacy and connection are very important. You guys have already heard, if you're looking for love, you need to start loving yourself, just work on yourself. And so making an intimate connection with yourself, maybe leaving yourself those little notes or like we were talking about earlier, messaging yourself. <laughs> Those little messages, I love you during the day, is very helpful. Another thing I found that really helps me get into not only a, a I guess, a self-love vibration, but um, the vibration of, uh, I, I was going to say being thankful. That's not the word I'm looking for. Gratitude. That's the word. So getting into the vibration of gratitude really helps us to manifest things easier into our life. And so one thing I've started doing is blessing not only my food, but also my water. And um, I like to say this out loud, um, but you can also say it internally or you can say it really low. So either or, it doesn't really matter, but I like to say it out loud. Um, thank you for this water. I love you. This water is so important to me. Thank you for nourishing me and giving me vibrant, clear, acne-free skin. Um, thank you for helping me feel healthy and full of just power and energy. And really, like, I will just bless the heck out of water or the food that is nourishing my body and getting into that gratitude mindset. Um, just, just watch how it changes your life. Like, literally, try it for just a week. Just a week. Watch how these, like, your life starts to change. Um, and this all goes back into um, this gratitude mindset will also affect your sacral chakra because you are... Um, I want to say you're more feeling just happy and self-satisfied and you're able to feel just the happiness of being alive you know it's just the little thing so you really don't have to do a whole lot um to start feeling joy you know to start feeling you know just passion and pleasure you really don't have to do a lot so if you take nothing away from this video just understand that your sacral chakra determines your overall sense of well-being you will not feel well you will not feel satisfied unless this sacral chakra is balanced and working so i think it's important to not only talk about what a sacral shock being unbalanced looks like but what does it look like when a sacral chakra is balanced so one thing that you will notice is that you'll just feel that like life in general is more enjoyable and it could be something so dumb 
as like getting your favorite coffee or like I don't know maybe you drink matcha and just the matcha that the Starbucks barista made was just really good this morning like you will just start to feel thankful for so many little things and it's just life in general will be enjoyable you won't even have to get good news because it'll seem like so many little things are going right that you're already in the vibration of you just got the best news ever <laughs> like it's really funny how this works um also you, you know your relationships will just be healthy um financially and emotionally you will not have any issues like i promise you you will not have any issues like it'll feel like you can not only stand on your own two feet but you can also support someone else just with um, encouraging words or maybe even doing something nice for them like you just feel like you have so much that it's so easy for you to share um i think when this gets unbalanced i know me in particular i would feel like i don't have enough like i can barely do this on my own you think i have you know the time to help you with your issues or you know sometimes like i'll feel like if i'm already feeling like insecure it's just like how am i also supposed to deal with this person's insecurities when i have so many of my own so you will just you'll have so much room for love so much room for giving and so much patience that um, you'll just naturally feel more abundant um also i think it's pretty much well known that you'll just be feeling more authentic to yourself in general like it'll just be like this is me this is who I'm supposed to be. I, I am who I am. Um, this can really help you with feeling like you're on your life path as well. You won't feel like you're way off the mark or like you're falling behind and you know you won't feel like you're living too much in the future. You will just feel like even every day-to-day -day moment you're just you're so involved. You're just so into it. So this is a lot of what I've just been describing is being in a flow state and I think flow states are just so much fun. <laughs> They're amazing. Like it doesn't happen a lot, but once you figure out the hacks of getting into a flow state, like you'll always want to be into a flow state. So when the sacral chakra is unbalanced, um, you're going to struggle with your emotions, you know, and I don't want to say you're going to be feeling emotions because we all have so many different emotions. You know, I have the emotion of um, feeling full like after a really good meal of feeling content there's the emotion of being you know a little bit lazy there's the emotion of being jealous there's the emotion of being uh, angry or you know there's the emotion of just uh, feeling love or maybe needing something like there's so many different emotions so it's not that you're feeling more emotions it's just that you're going to struggle with the emotions so when something happens and it throws you off because you know you are going to have things in your life that's going to happen it just it doesn't matter that you're in a high vibe that you're never going to get any bad news but you're going to notice that when you do get that bad news when you know someone tells you something that really they should have never said you're going to notice that you're able to acknowledge the feeling of just either annoyance or anger or whatever you're feeling um, you're going to be able to acknowledge it you're going to feel it but you're also going to be able to move on so it's just like you're gonna feel it and then you're already going to have the answer or the fix to it right at your hands like you're not going to sit there and struggle and this one text message or this one thing that happened at work isn't going to throw off the rest of your day so for people with an unbalanced sacral chakra really it only takes one thing and it will ruin the rest of their day and then it's just going to snowball into more issues because usually they're going to attract more issues unknowingly um, for some people, you might feel um, overly emotional or numb and depressed when your sacral chakra is off balance. You might also disconnect from yourself or you'll like pull away. Um, so if something is happening in your relationship or with a person that you're talking to, you don't like the way that it's going, you might notice that you might start ignoring them or just stop texting back. Like you just, you pull away. And, um, you know, if pulling away helps you to be happier, then, you know, by all means, sometimes you have to cut people off. But if you notice that you pull away a lot, just hoping that they will double text you or triple text you or just to get your way, if you're pulling, if you're disconnecting in a manipulative fashion, then this is not good. <laughs> and usually you'll notice that, like, it does nothing for you. Like, it doesn't resolve the issue and you don't come out a victor or you know you don't come out better on the other side another sign of having an unbalanced sacral chakra is like um, feeling dependent on others like you need them to text you back you know 
within a, a timely manner like it really matters to you it really matters if they said that they liked your new outfit or it really matters to you that your boss you know acknowledged the work that you did on that project like these things really really matters like you're really dependent on someone else either emotionally validating you or physically validating you or um maybe financially <laughs> like giving you more money like uh, I don't feel like he cares about me that much because he didn't take me to this restaurant. He took me to this cheap restaurant instead. <laughs> so surely he doesn't care. So we already talked about the sexual imbalances that occurred. Um, sometimes you might notice that you might start getting attached to certain issues or people, or you might start having fear around them, maybe ghosting you even though they've never done that before. Or you might start having fear that they're gonna meet someone else. Maybe tonight they're meeting up with some friends and you're not able to go and so you're just, you have this, this fear around them meeting some girl. This is another indication of an unbalanced sacral chakra and the issue is that if this is prolonged, if you get stuck in these cycles, um, it can manifest your fears, like exactly what you're scared of. So I'm not saying you just having the thought pop up in your head or if you thinking of, oh my gosh, what would I do if I found out that he was cheating or what would I do if he just ghosted me? Like, I'm not saying like that alone is going to manifest it into your life, but if you get stuck and this is a reoccurring uh, thought, a reoccurring daydream, a reoccurring worry, that's when it starts to manifest because it'll lower your vibration so you'll start to already feel like it's real like you can feel your heart almost like drop into the pit of your stomach at the thought of him being with someone else and so when you do this enough over and over and over again um it will manifest and so um i'm trying to think of it it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy um and sometimes i've noticed with other people um, projecting their insecurities on me sometimes that led me to really go find someone else and so Sometimes it's like they really weren't but because you're always bringing it up because you're always making them feel like they're doing something wrong it pushes the other person away to where you know they're just happier with someone else that's not always making them feel like they're a bad guy or that they're going to betray you. I also thought I would mention um, that another indicator of a sacral chakra being off balance is like a lack of creativity. This could be writer's block, this could be you not doing the things that really make you happy anymore. Maybe you stopped singing, maybe you stopped dancing, and you used to always love to do these things even if you're doing it alone in your room or in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth. Um, I think this is also a good indication of depression, so like this is kind of under that umbrella. Uh, also you might lose some of like your financial power and um you know when that happens you might start to get dependent on someone so some of these things it's like one thing happens and then you can see how other issues kind of like snowball like right along with it so there are some physical symptoms of an off balance sacral chakra um one is infertility i don't want to say that infertility is 100 percent the cause of an unbalanced sacral chakra but i thought just with the research that i've done into this that i should at least mention it um i do know a few people who have healed themselves when it was like the doctor told them they could never get pregnant and they healed themselves with um sacral herbs and things like that so i don't know <laughs> maybe but i don't want to say like some people this could just be genetic and this has nothing to do with you but I just wanted to at least throw it out there because in my research this is one of the things that are listed um another is lower back pain um hip issues like arthritis a low libido or sexual dysfunction usually you'll notice the low libido or the sexual dysfunction um during like depression so if you feel like you're going through like a depressing cycle then you'll notice you just aren't in the mood um, urinary issues, kidney issues, issues during child labor, constipation, or pelvic pain. So for mental and emotional symptoms, this is more of just going to be like a lack of confidence. You're just going to have low motivation to do anything because really life just kind of feels like like you're stuck and so you don't you're not really gonna have a motivation to do anything because it feels like what you're already doing isn't helping so of course you're not gonna want to do anything new um, you might have the inability to connect with other people um, this is again goes back to pulling yourself away from your family and friends or from the person you're talking to or your partner obviously you're not gonna have a, you know any creativity you're you might have more fear um, anxiety obviously depression 
you might feel overwhelmed, you might get addicted to certain things um, that help you to escape. This could be alcohol, this could be smoking. These things by themselves aren't an issue, it's just when we abuse them or when we're doing it all the time just to feel some happiness and you're not able to get to that higher state of happiness without them, that's when it's an issue. Also the need to control and then of course the attachment issues of getting too attached and of trying to control the other person. Please don't go out tonight or you knowing that every Friday they like to do something with, I don't know, maybe the guys, they go to play softball and so this Friday night all of a sudden you think of something to do so he will not be in town to be able to go play softball. <laughs> like you're trying to just control. Now getting back into how we heal the sacral chakra, uh, my favorite for sacral chakra is citrine but there are so many different um, crystals that you could use. Um, carnelian is one, goldstone, pyrite, um, jasper, tiger's eye. Um, tiger's eye can also be used for the um, solar plexus. So some of these have multiple uses. I think citrine can also be used for solar plexus. So um, some of these are dual. Um, also uh, bronzite. I don't know if you guys have heard about bronzite, but there are certainly some crystals that work better than others. That's why I said citrine is my favorite. Um, oh, there's another one that I have. Um, it's the uh, honey calcite. That's also really good for solar plexus and sacral. So I'm going to make a separate video about um, chakra balancing and healing and we'll go into, you know, what each stone does and how you're gonna, how you can work with it and also the things that you'll notice that will start to change in your life. Um, there's just so many that this video would be like ridiculously long and I feel like we're already pretty out there. Um, I just, I wanna go back and really just hammer down that water for balancing your sacral chakra is so important. Um, also taking those baths, which is also, you know, a time for you to relax you know, especially if you have an overactive mind, just kind of getting away and floating. Water is so, so healing. Um, another thing, and um, I love this, uh, Kegels. <laughs> Doing Kegel exercises will help you strengthen the sacral chakra. Um, when we were talking about the issues that can arise when your sacral chakra is off balance, um, difficulty in childbirth is one of them. Um, I remember when I had um, a sacral chakra that was off balance because I was going through a divorce. While I was going through, well this was a little before, but um, I was already having issues in my marriage and it was so hard for me to push. That area was just, it was so weak and so for a lot of women um, to get ready for this they'll do the perineum massages and they'll start practicing their kegels before they even get pregnant and you know they'll really prepare themselves and so pushing for some people they can have they can start pushing like within an hour and just things are ready to go for others you might labor for a very long time you might emotionally and physically just get exhausted and you might have to have the doctor help you like they had to use like one of those little plungers that they put on the baby's head to help you know get the baby out because my body just just could not and so um, I think energetically I was already drained because my marriage just was not going how I knew it should have gone. So even though we were not yet in the divorce, you know, we weren't doing the divorce yet, I just kind of knew on an intuitive level. And so again, going into Kegels, <laughs> I know that was kind of off on a tangent, but doing Kegels can help you for not only you feeling more confident and when you're with your partner and you're making love and also kegels most importantly kegels help you to achieve orgasm quicker and also the orgasms will last longer so like they'll be more powerful but also it can help you when you are um you know going through the birth and labor process and um yeah if you've ever been through that process and you had a weak pelvic floor then you know it is not fun so doing things like um kegels with yoni eggs that's a very powerful thing that you can do anytime i like especially like if you're about to go on a date if you want to make yourself more magnetic more feminine um like you literally start doing like daily kegels and you will notice like how you're out and even with a mask on at in walmart like men will like say you know i like your dress or like they'll come up to you they'll start talking to you like you'll just like pull in people it's so crazy this is what i've noticed personally in my life that's why i'm sharing it with you um and so like start doing this and start playing around with your reality and introducing these these things into your life and you'll notice a difference like when you go out into the world 
So I recommend um, at least 30 Kegels. You're gonna hold it for at least 10 seconds or longer. You don't have to count it out, but definitely count how many you're doing. You can do this with a Yoni egg. You can do this with um, like a Kegel Master device. You'll have to Google that one. Um, it was worth the money for me. Um, or you can just do this with nothing. You can just do this on your own. And um, there's even books about different ways that you can have your legs positioned that will help you to strengthen that Kegel muscle and that core. Another thing is doing core exercises. There are some exercises that when we um, strengthen like our lower stomach, if you wanna get like a flatter lower stomach, that is also strengthening those um, pelvic floor muscles. Um, so that is a huge one, uh, but I think just doing daily Kegels, at least 30, you can do 90, you can do 60, but doing that, you'll start to see a difference in not only um, when you start to, you know, self-pleasure, but also when you're with your partner, you'll notice the difference, and also when you're attracting people to you, because when our Seiko chakra is in balance for women, this pulls in people, it draws them in, um, you just, it's like you have a light, like you are the light, they're the moth, they're coming to your flame, and it really opens the doors for, you know, so many different opportunities not only for relationships but it could be even work opportunities because people are just going to like you and they're just going to be drawn to you and they're not even going to know why so i think i'm just going to end it here because it's i think i got about everything that i could about um, healing the sacral chakra um we'll go into other videos about um crystals and which ones you can use um for different issues and also we'll talk about balancing out the other chakras but i i felt the need to skip ahead to the second chakra just because it is so important for women and so starting here with healing um, your masculine wound this is like the best place to start and you'll notice that you'll have more love for yourself and more love for others and you're not going to feel as triggered you're not going to feel like you have to defend yourself like things that used to trigger you are just not going to bother you anymore you're going to be on such a different level of vibration it's it's insane um i think we talked a little bit about how to heal your root chakra just a little bit like i scraped the surface in the last video if you haven't seen the other two or three videos in this series definitely go watch those um but I talked a little bit about when you save up just like a little rainy day fund and this is a fund that you're not saving it up to ever put it towards anything it's just the fund that you will have in case something happens, sorry. So this is a fund that you never, ever, ever touch. So you're not saving it up so you can put it towards some handbag or so you can put it towards um, like a down payment for something. Like, no, this is just a fund that you always have just in case, but you'll notice that once you have that, that root chakra, that financial security there, you'll notice that you won't be in more of, um, you won't go into dependent mode. You won't go into, I don't have enough and so I'm willing to lower my standards just because you are financially um, well off.